A lot of people are like, they're trying to do a side hustle. They're trying to do this, yeah. getting started. So what would your approach be? Good. It look good. You that got everything. Good. You got vintage everything on right now. I'm decked out, bro. I never felt better in my life. Is, is it, it intimidating to like be around? I mean, it somebody? is. Like, bro, I got pockets. I saw that. You look great. Well, okay. Uh, Before we get started, okay. Ladies love it. Yeah, I, I I've seen the videos. I've been seeing the promos and everything. People hit me up. Where's Jay? Where can you find you? Oh man. So um, for the good people at home, uh, first introduce yourself, Jay. Who mm. are you? What's going on here? My name. I go by Jay Law in the streets. Okay. Um, I was a I was a rap videographer, rapper that turned into a small businessman that created videos for small businesses and nonprofits and weddings. And then COVID hit and wiped me out. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to start garage sailing because I've kind of wanted to do it for a long time. But I just thought it was super lame because I was super cool, like shooting videos and like going on a little pump tour and like yard sailing just ain't cool after you were hanging out with little pump okay and yeah you were on a lot of tours by the way that year you yeah. were 2019 was the best year of my life what is it you had that you had pump and then you had um whiz whiz yeah. uh, machine gun kelly you were on yep. that one too yep. met juice world that was uh, crazy Ski mass when was gary v was that 18 that might have been the gary eight. v was 19 dude yeah and okay. then uh the arnold's yeah yeah, Rhonda. 2019 totally was great, but then 2020 that. was just like the worst. Okay. And now I'm yard sailing, bro. Now we're here. I'm fresh to death. You look great. I got the 96 bulls on with the tags on it. That's crazy. It just heaters on deck. Okay. So let's let's talk about this. How did you? What was? The, what was it? You just woke up one day. Well, first of all, did you start with clothing, or did it? Was it something else first? And then I was go I was it? going after collectibles, 80s and 90s stuff. But what intrigued me about clothing is you could buy it for like a quarter or 50 cents at a yard sale. And that's why it's so cool to me because you're not going to buy a $20 t-shirt at a yard sale. So there was more profit on it. But I'll tell you who really like who really opened my eyes to vintage clothing was a dude named Marpo out in the Harrisburg area. It's Alex Marpo. And he's like a legend out that way. Like he's like the OG of shooting videos, doing music, clothing, anything culture, like Marpo is the most hip dude out that way. And he had these shows during COVID and they were like, they were selling vintage clothing, but then they also had like a painter and, and guys selling vinyl, uh, people selling like custom clothing. And so I thought that was dope. And obviously, I'm not the type of dude to co copy anybody to do my own event. But the the clothing like like intrigued me because there's a bunch of like 20 year old kids, and I'm kind of old man trying to be young. You know what I mean? Running mm -hmm. out of time. And then, but that's what they were wearing. They were like wearing shirts that I would have had in high school, and was like, man. And I looked through them, and I'm like, this guy's got like Bulls t-shirts, and it's like a hundred bucks and like a Britney Spears tour tee. And it was like 80 or 90 bucks. And I'm like, I know what this looks like. If I see it, maybe if I can find some of that while I'm out, then it's an easy flip. And then that's, I just got more, ex I got more excited about the clothing than anything else. Yeah, how, mu how many shirts do you think I, you got? Between 2,500 and 3,000 t-shirts. And most of them ain't worth nothing. <laughs> I just bought them because I thought they were cool, and now I'm stuck with them. A lot of them. Not everything is this fly. You know no, what I'm saying? No. What, what were you asking me? I think I I don't remember, but oh, I... How long have I been doing Yeah, that's right. right. Six all months, all right. 12 months, so, 18, what are we talking? At that whole story about Marpo then leads me into my brothers because they started getting into sports cards, and they were going, you know, going to Walmart and buying cards for $20 and then going to a card sale and selling them for 200 mm. like it was out of control at one point in time and uh so I, I i started getting on facebook marketplace and buying cards and like i hit one lick where i bought i bought a bucket of cards off a dude for 75 bucks and there ended up being five boxes of 88 tops and if you look up online a box of 88 tops football cards because the bo jackson rookie's in it 
Vinny Testaverde. I man, that there's some there's some obviously some old Montana and Jerry Rice stuff in there, Marino. Uh so I bought this box for 75 bucks and it took me like a month or so, right? A whole tub of cards. And I ended up making like six hundred dollars off of this. And I still have stuff that I haven't sold yet, but it had a few hundred Barry Sanders cards. So I went on the Facebook and found Barry Sanders card groups, like memorabilia groups, and would just take pictures of nine or twelve cards at a time and just throw up a price and then haggle with dudes. I sold like I'm not joking, man. I think I had like 500 Barry Sanders cards, and some of them were super exotic stuff, right? And so a lot of these cards were worth five to ten dollars a piece, and I still have like a hundred left that weren't the, the the good ones. But like 75 bucks to you know five six hundred dollars is like was crazy. And then I was like, then I got on this card kick, and then realized it just wasn't my. It was too much time to yeah. go through them. And then, uh, then it just it, and then that was during the winter, so we're talking like February and March, and then before I know it, it it's May, it's like yard sale season. I want to know when you're talking about Facebook Marketplace, people might not know. Like, how did you start finding these groups? Did you just search? Did you have to go through like a, like ten, twelve I mean, to I, find what happened? Honestly, you just I just go in the search on in uh, on Facebook. So these were this was like a Barry Sanders group, and there's only like. 200 members right but they're all actively buying barry sanders sports memorabilia so i just type in barry sanders sports memorabilia and then when i got a bunch of bo jackson stuff i did the same thing not all these players have these groups but i tapped into like a real cool group that is always trading back and forth and selling and it was just incredible because I might have got the money on eBay, but would have took a lot longer, would have been a lot of shipping. Like, there was a couple times where guys would say, hey, man, I saw what you posted. What else do you have? Can you send me pictures? And I'm like, boom, 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 boom. And a dude's like, this one, this one, this one. And they were, like, fair about what they offered because they were actual fans of Barry and wasn't buying it to resell it. Mm -hmm. So they're like, man, you got some good stuff. I would give you five apiece. They're probably worth 10 or 12 apiece, but – I'll give you five, and I'm like, all right, because I got less than a penny in every one. And all out of a tub for 75? 75, up in Thurmont, which it, you know isn't too far from where I live. But that's where I started hunting down baseball cards and, and sports cards. And Crazy. then yard sale season happened, and I was like, this is way more fun than – thumbing through a thousand cards when you get them. Yeah, I remember seeing you at, like in the middle of winter. You were just in the office. Just going through cards, it was it was to. crazy. Like I had, I had to, and then and then what what was cool about that? For we get in a yard sale, I I amassed all these cards and did thumb through them and try you know try to get lucky and get mm. a Kobe rookie. Mm. It, that none of that happened. At this point with cards, you're probably not going to buy a lot of cards off somebody and score a Tom Brady rookie or a Kobe or a Jordan. I mean, five years ago probably, but it's just so hot now and sports memorabilia is so hot that. Most people know what they got. Has that just been like over the last year? How how long is this? I mean, it literally, it literally started at the beginning of the year in January. Like it was around Christmas time. My, my brothers were starting to buy cards up and sell them. They would buy a sealed box of football, basketball cards, buy it for twenty, and some would flip for eighty. Some would flip for a hundred. Then there was, some packs would go for like two hundred. I saw that and was like, man. But then couldn't. I can never find them. That's such a crapshoot on mm -hmm. getting at Walmart at the right time to buy those cards. Okay, so how? Why'd you start switching? Just because it was nice outside, and then you started going out, or? Well, I mean, at that point, by the time yard sale season started, I was sick of thumbing through cards, and you know, I had a couple good scores, but I also found a bunch of stuff that I I didn't score on, and maybe broke even on, mm -hmm. and then spent a lot of time going through them just to break even. The yard sale stuff was just exciting because. I knew that if I hit enough, I would eventually start finding some really cool stuff. And we live in a part of the country where people don't throw anything away. And knowing that made it easier because you living in D.C. or Philly, you're not you're not yard sailing like that, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's what made me think it was worth. Like, hey, let me spend two or three Saturdays, and if I find nothing, then I know it was like a test. And then went out. 
and my first day yard sailing, I found a, a, a 1989 Larry Bird T-shirt and an 86 Celtics champion shirt, world champion shirt at a yard sale for a quarter each. I actually just sold both of those recently. I thought they would sell quick, and they didn't, but I ended up getting 30 for the Larry Bird and 30 for the Celtics. So I paid 50 cents and ended up making 60 bucks. But, like, when I found those, I was like, money. That's and like crazy. That, that, that was the first day I went yard sailing. So that's – and then also found, like, some WWF wrestling buddies. Everybody remembers the WWF wrestling buddies, and they were a dollar a piece. And ended up getting twenty five or thirty a piece, and I bought four of them. So like, that's crazy. So yeah. you're just it's it just the profit margins, just going there, yeah. hard time listening. And it was it's cool, so good. I, I would buy, you know, I would probably buy twenty twenty five things, and then come back here and list all of them, and then by the end of the weekend, I would have sold one or two things that made me back all the money that I had spent. Because when I started, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a hundred dollars and just stop there, because I'll just buy a whole bunch of shit. I got money problems, so <laughs> I was like, I'll do a hundred, and just I'm done. Once I run out, and then I come back here and list it. And like I said, I, fa- I found those wrestling buddies, and they were newer ones. They weren't like old ones either. That was cool about. It. They were like 2010, and I bought four of them for a dollar a piece, and then ended up getting. 60 bucks or something like that for all of them so it's like i went yard sailing with 100 bucks sold four of the 25 items and i'm and i'm at 60 and i can't remember what else i, I sold at that point because now it's like on ebay i'm probably up to like i think i've sold about 400 things in six months okay we gotta talk about that too yeah. you gotta look at that inventory gotta look at that okay so you had a strategy when you first started now that you had that structure, did that stay like that once you started getting those easy flips, or then did it expand? Like it did. It, it stayed for probably the first like month and a half. It was I'm gonna spend a hundred bucks, and then just I'm I'm like I'm not joking. Every time I, I would spend a hundred, and then by the next week when it was time to yard sale again, I made at least two hundred. So I was doubling up, and then each week I was left with like twenty items. 20 items, 20 items. And now I got a hundred things listed on eBay. I took a hundred dollars and turned it into four or no, two, four, six, eight. So like I took $400, turned it into $800 and then had a hundred things in stock. Crazy. That's, and that's, and that's, mm-hmm. and that's what happened until I, I found a couple random things worth a whole lot of money. And then, and then I started like really tracking individuals at yard sales then i was like hey man you got your son got anything or you got anything in the house you got like stuff like that first of all when you go and ask people that are, are they fine with that or are they yeah, just they're usually happy i i bought so many things this year from from people and they laughed at me because i wanted them and then we're like i got a dozen more of those in the house i didn't think anybody would buy them and so yeah it that happened quite a few times with with clothing and I, I, when you were talking about that, I remember that. Did you get a Walkman? Like you thought, like yeah, that was my first, my first crazy find. I found it was from the year two thousand. It was a Sony Walkman, still sealed, cassette player, still sealed, never been opened. And I bought it for, I think it was three dollars at a yard sale, um, from a guy that bought storage lockers. So his game was to buy cheap and sell high as well. But I think when you're buying storage lockers, you get overwhelmed with how many things you got. You're not scanning everything. So I bought this for three dollars, and in two weeks it sold for one fifty to to a chick out in in New York. That's crazy. Yeah. So that was that was the first like crazy find that like had me just had me gas, man. So many shirts, all this stuff. Yeah. Let, let's just go through a couple of things just memorable for you. Just a couple right. ones that like you top, think about. All right. Yeah. Top five, top right. three. So I'd what say the, the the second coolest one after that would be I found a Pokemon VHS still sealed, but it had an original card in it. And that's what made it valuable. I think I paid I bought like ten it's like twelve VHSs for five bucks. And they were all sealed, like Disney stuff. 
And I didn't even notice the Pokemon in it when I bought it. I just saw a couple, like Lion King was in there, a couple ones, and they go for some money. And that ended up, I ended up getting 150 for that. A sealed VHS tape, Pokemon. Paid 60 cents for it. There was also, too, they had, um, what was it? You had like a... Uh, the Rock, remember it was uh, a T-shirt, either that one or the 007 T-shirt. I'm thinking about. Du- okay, all right, good. You, that's funny. You remember some of them better than I do. I a James Bond, early 2000s, like a 2001 007 James Bond T-shirt. I sold it, and we're going to bring the comps up. I may be off on these a little bit, but mm-hmm. I'm I'm pretty sure it, w- it was 90 to 100 bucks, and that was 50 cents at a yard sale in Williamsport. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. There is one other because I was like, there's no way you're going to well, sell these. Well, I tell you what, uh, which, which one? The which shorts. One? Those girls' oh, shirt, we're, shorts. We're, yeah. Man, bro, you remember mine? Yeah. It's, all right. So I found this was in Hagerstown out by the Hagerstown airport. A lady was selling some 80s, like real cool color. Yeah. Uh, corduroy shorts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Made by Ocean Pacific, but they still had the tags on them, right? All of them had the tags. Not all of them, but I bought all of them. There was there was six pairs. Four of them still had tags. They were four dollars a pair. So I paid twenty four bucks, and I didn't have my phone with me to scan them. I just I just knew it was cool, man, because of the colors. The comps were one seventy five, and right. So I list mine for that. Boom, gone. One pair sold for one seventy five. And then I sold a pair that didn't have any tags on it for seventy five, so I'm at two fifty on an investment of twenty four bucks, something like that. Twenty four bucks, and then it, listen, man, I've sold so much stuff on eBay. I'm, I think I did sell a third pair with tags and got. I think I, somebody offered me one twenty. Somebody offered me one twenty five, and I took it because it's like I paid Come on now. four bucks. So we're talking about like five hundred dollars. Yeah. On on twelve bucks, that's corduroy crazy. shorts. Yeah, man. I remember that because you showed me. I'm like, there's no way. I'm like, no one will ever buy these. I was like, but that see, we think that because we, no one around here would buy it. But every pair went to the West Coast, yeah. so that's who's buying it. For me personally, the stuff that I'm selling seems to be it's either New York, Florida, or California, and I don't know why. But nothing. I'm selling nothing in Ohio and Montana, and and like I'm just I'm not. I'll tell you what. I see a lot a lot of streamers if they're in LA stuff like that. They always it's the '90s. It's late '80s, '90s, or Austin, Texas. Mm-hmm. Going there, it, it's like yeah, I do sell a lot of stuff to Texas. Now that you say that, it's yeah. it's crazy going there. Yeah. It, it just I'm like I didn't think this was going to be a thing. One more I, I got I think it was the video game. I think it was Ca- Castlevania oh, or man. something. Yeah. Oh God. I so that's that was a guy that I went I went to his mom's yard sale and he showed up. And it was cleaning out a trailer, and it was full of toys. And I was like, you want to sell any of that stuff? And he was like, yeah, you come back next weekend. We're going to have a yard sale. And I came back, and um, I spent $450 with this guy, right? But he had a bunch of really old 80s toys. And uh, he had a box. I, I'm not kidding, a box this big full of PS2 games. There ended up being like 70 games in there. And I offered him, a, I, to be fair, I offered him 100 bucks, And he was happy as hell because he apparently got them for free. And inside was a Nintendo DS Castlevania complete in the box. Listed it on eBay, and it sold for 175 in less than three minutes. That's crazy. So, yeah, so $100 for 60 games. So what you know, Come on fifty now. cents for one. Crazy. So it's like you add that up, and then we're just talking. So we just talked about like four or five things that I found, and if you look at the net profit, it's I literally spent a hundred dollars and made well over a thousand. Yeah, and so it just it just adds up quick. Uh, especially with this channel, a lot of people are like they're trying to do a side hustle, they're trying to do this, yeah. getting started. So what would your approach be? They're in a small town, they're trying to do this trying to make maybe, I don't know, an extra $200, $500 starting out, what it's would easy. you start doing? I, I, if, I, if I recommended anything because clothing just speaks to people. So there's still, there's still older guys that wear vintage T-shirts, and then you got a whole wave of 
late teen, early 20s that want vintage T-shirts. But what's cool about it is the 20-year-olds, there's a big mix of them that vintage means something different to them because they're only 20. So they're like after, you know, Disney movie stuff from the early 2000s, 2010, and they're paying crazy money for it. And then you got guys who are 35 or 40 that will pay crazy money for Power Ranger shirt or a Looney Tune shirt or, you know, Batman. Mm-hmm. Whereas Batman don't doesn't necessarily speak as much to somebody who's 19. Batman means way more when you're 30. He just does. You saw more of it. So I think clothing's the quickest way because we all recognize artists, bands, pop culture, and just that I would just buy it, buy it up. Okay. I'd buy it up. <laughs> and so, say for instance, okay, you're starting, and I, I liked at the beginning, you're like, you put a restriction. What, what would be so they know, like, they should, and just ballpark it, like, hey, 50, 100, and then you should go and execute, put it on, like, Facebook Marketplace, eBay, what would you think? See, I've, I, did, I did so good on eBay that I haven't, I haven't ventured into Marketplace, but that's good too i think if you're selling large items marketplace is the way to do it because once you start getting shipping on huge stuff that prevents people from buying it and then you've really got to worry about the damages if something happens or you send a a a heavy record player across the country and it gets broke on the way and then you want it shipped back and then you got to pay shipping both ways and then you're out a bunch of money so Shipping a shirt across the country is six bucks, you know. Shipping a video game is media mail. That's there's whole levels to shipping that people don't understand. Like media mail, you could ship a video game across the country for three dollars, and so you're just you're just less insurance, you know. A easier way to start out, hundred dollars, man. You got to start with a hundred bucks. Like if you can't do that, then what do you, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Yeah, $100 is, is nothing to get into it. Because I think if you did it and you actually spent it, you're you're at least going to make 150 back and have five or six items sitting around that may sell a couple months from now. Mm-hmm. So Very interesting. And I like it. You were talking about 100 they, they, I, I saw someone else talking about investing. Like Even if you're like, well, I don't have it right now, save up for it then. Just go mm-hmm. to get to that number before you're trying to just do penny yeah. games and stuff yeah. like that. Okay, cool. All right, so listen, any for the good people, where can they find you? Where where they need to be watching all of your stuff? Listen, you got this 96 championship. Should they be buying stuff from you, just watching what you're doing? What do you want them to do? I don't know. That's the problem. <laughs> I don't I I don't know. I'm just I'm so caught up in the sauce right now of buying and holding on to my favorite stuff and selling the stuff that'll go quick. Um I'd like to keep a lot of it local. Mm-hmm. Um, start. We're going to start doing more sales, right? So we're going to our next vintage sale. We're going to start bringing celebrities out and doing meet and greets and bring some other vendors. So that's what I'm trying to. That's what I'm looking forward to the most with this and tying the two things together. Good times. Yeah. All right. So we just got to watch when you're dropping those different the shows and everything for the yeah. Like you're gonna know things. I'm having a garage sale locally. Yep. And if you got, I mean, if you got to travel a little bit, I would do it because I'm like when I do it, I do deals, man. Like I'm selling some stuff for flipper prices. You can make it and make money off of it. You know, like I'm. Yeah. I want to get people out and and meet people because I think the only way you really buy this stuff long term is actually talking to people. You can get lucky at yard sales and thrift shops, but like. I want to get to the point where, you know, um, somebody's moving or somebody passed away and has all these things, and and I want people to know to call me, and I'll give you a decent price on it and get it to somebody that actually really likes it. Obviously, I gotta make money too, but I want to be known as the person that you're like. You think, man, I got all this old stuff. I gotta call him because he'll buy it. I want the money now. I'm calling him. So that's what we're getting to. Not to put my secret out there. I think that's putting a secret out, but only I can do that because, I mean, I'll be having just the best garage sales ever, brother. So, you know what I mean? you got to really, You got to come hard if you want to take my garage sale and crown. <laughs> we got the room to do it. Yeah. We have the room to store it, lock it up, put it away. So, like, it just kind of it just kind of worked together, to be honest with you. Plus, we got a whole Amazon pallet of yours in the back that – Yeah. 
to be continued, but you know, there should be some rent paid on the amount of square footage <laughs> all those mailboxes take up and farming equipment hey. and RV steps. But no one knew that know. was going to happen. Before we go, where can the good people find you at? Where do you want them to follow? Do you want them to follow you, buy things from you? What do you want? I mean, until something changes and I become the guy formerly known as J Law, it's it's still one room media. That's all my socials. Um, I don't know, man. I like if you if you want to buy stuff, go to eBay. One Room Media LLC is my eBay account. There's a Shopify in the works um, that has been started. I think that's going to be the best way to be able to show people all my all my best stuff. It's not going to be hundreds of listings. It's going to be like my best stuff that you can buy and uh, be able to shop on there. So uh, listen, man, I appreciate it. Uh, we might have to do this again. I think so, man. Especially if if uh, if people have questions, yeah, yeah. Like we could, we could. I, I, there's a lot of information out there that you sh- you should know before you start yard selling and eBaying. Like as far as fees, shipping, um, a lot of things, uh, buyer and seller protection. So many different things that we could that could literally be a podcast in itself but things to think about it sounds fun and it is a whole lot of fun but it's also been a whole lot of work too yeah so it's 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 a real it's almost a full-time job after looking for it um listing it yeah um and then shipping it out there's you actually have some time within each product that you're selling so if you're not buying low and selling high you're gonna, you're just gonna weigh yourself out. I was just like you say, and we'll do a video and the recap about that um, when we did the pallet. You know, I was, I was wrecked for a couple of days. You know, I was so sore after we did that. Really? It was terrible. I was like, it's, but that was that was heavy stuff. But yeah, I mean, if you're, I mean, me and Nick went on the forty mile yard sale this year, and and we were out there at eight or nine a.m. in the heat, and went miles and miles and miles, and we didn't find anything that day. Are you serious? That was our worst day of yard sailing, and there was 40 miles of them. And somebody must have came through and come through all the good stuff that we wanted before we got there. And it was a horrible day, and I made no money that day. Crazy. So. Crazy. All right. So we'll make sure we're going to come back. Remember, if you like this kind of stuff, we do this every single week. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. And in the comment section down below, let us know what you're trying to do. You're trying to start. You're trying to just do a side hustle on the weekends, trying to make 500, 2K a month. What are you trying to do? We'll be back next time, and Jay's going to come back to the channel if you want to. Oh, I'd love to. Okay. I'd love, there's nothing I love more than hearing your voice over oh, on the microphone. That's so nice. You just got a great tone to you. I appreciate that. Your parents should be very proud. We're going to leave that in. Thank you. <laughs> we'll see you next time.